Okay guys, we're back on the Game Design Driven by Viewers series and I was looking at some of the comments and mostly it seems like we just want to move in sort of an adventure direction um, like kind of like Metroidvania, Wind Waker, um, exploration and puzzles and things and uh, I think Treasure Adventure Game is a good thing to go by to just kind of experiment and kind of steer in that direction so that's what we're gonna do and this is the first time we've loaded so I'm gonna go to construct and you can load from here like your recent things or you can just go to this and open like most other programs find it um, a tutorial game I called it open so here we are and I'm going to go ahead and save a single file again, put it on the desktop, and I'm going to call it Tutorial Game 0.1. If I do this now, that means I can keep saving just with save, and I don't have to type in a name every time, and I won't overwrite my old file in case I want to go back to my original file. That's just an optional thing, but I think it's good to do. So next, since it's going to be an adventure game, let's make the area a little bigger. So we can go to our layout size. If you just like click out here somewhere, it'll go back in case you're on something else. Just click out here, change it. Uh, we'll double it like 1280 by 960 is fine for now. Control and uh, scroll out to zoom. And now. I'll take this background, which I'll name Sky. Should have done that before, but no big deal. Resize it out to here. And then I'll drag a box around all these and bring them down to here. Okay, so now if we test this, you'll see that we're still here where the camera was looking, and it has no way of knowing where our player is yet. So it's just still up here where this dotted line is. So we'll click on the player and then go to behaviors, add a new one, and make it scroll to. So the camera will scroll to this object, which is our player. So now if we test it, it goes to our player. He's got his platform physics, which we can probably change that a little bit now. Let's go ahead and make him a little bit slower and bring down his jump speed also however much you feel like now I can just quickly save and so now our player is a little bit slower with a little lower jump and it feels feels like he's grounded and like he has more gravity instead of before he was kind of floaty and he can't go off screen because we have the bound to layout okay so next let's make some water and uh, you could just double click and add a new tiled background but I'm gonna clone the sky here and call it water and double click on it and I'm gonna make it be like a little transparent so I'm just gonna find a blue and the alpha is your transparency 255 is max and 0 is 0 is totally clear 255 is totally opaque anywhere in between is in between so we'll make this be like 100 try that out and flood fill it now let's make it a little bit different than the sky though I'm gonna bring this out Oops, control Z is undo like any other program mostly. And now I'm gonna clone it this one. Make it I'll just leave it water two. Make it smaller. And this is gonna be like the top of the water. And it'll be a little quite a bit um, more opaque. And I want it to actually be shorter than this, so uh, I'm going to go back to the snap to grid thing in the view tab 
I'm going to change it to 16 by 16 instead of 32 and be sure you click a little bit here because if you just do it and then leave sometimes it doesn't save your settings so just click a couple times I don't know it's probably just a bug that'll be fixed soon and then I'm gonna now I can bring it down a little more and I might bring this down a little bit now too um, actually let's just bring these up control click them drag them up and then bring this on up to match and we can bring this up to about here make this one taller there we go so now we've got some water all of a sudden we're on an island and then I think I'll go ahead and clone this one more time and make this like the background water and it'll be completely opaque make it sort of like this or something bring it over here and this will be uh, well we can put it way up I guess I don't know but we're gonna make this go behind because it's overlapping so we'll change the Z order to the bottom now it's behind the sky so we can change the sky to be behind everything and here pretty soon we'll start making uh, layers real layers instead of just using the Z order on one layer uh, we might do that in a second if we have time uh, actually yeah let's just go ahead and get that out of the way there's projects over here that has each project with the well actually from what I know it's just the one, this one and you have your layout and your vent sheets and all this stuff well there's also the layers tab right now we just have one layer you can change the visibility to be on or off for each layer and if they're locked and if they're locked you can't click on anything select anything or whatever on that layer so we're gonna add a couple layers and we're gonna rename this one um, sky and then we're gonna rename this one sprite and then we'll rename this one foreground so this right here will be our foreground we can move it to that layer and it, it whatever's on top is on top so like say we put foreground on the bottom it would be behind everything so we got our background our player and uh, objects and our foreground and there can be other things like we could go ahead and put in another one that's our um, like our overlay I'll call it HUD and it'll be like our our health and our, our, our lives or whatever we decide to have and our inventory things like that that don't move and uh, I'll go back to that later and talk about it some more but so here, here's our background sky and then we can move it just like we did before to the sky layer and now everything that's left needs to go on the sprites layer and whichever layer is selected at the time is wherever you'll add objects into and that's what it'll go to so you may have to move it if you forgot to change so I'll get this out of the way select all these with control clicks this is everything else and we will move it to sprites and move this back up okay so now we can save I'm gonna go ahead and do save a single file um, tutorial game 0 0.1 and now we can just always save easily you should probably do that early on I don't remember if I did this time but um, that way you can uh, keep saving and not save over your old file in case you want to go back I'm not sure if I mentioned that but anyway now we can test it again okay everything is on its own layer it's starting to look starting to feel like we're in uh, I don't know a real environment I mean we're getting there so now uh, someone wanted to look at event sheets a little bit so we'll start getting into that some uh, we'll go ahead and add a new sprite and we'll be sure we're on our sprite layer double click add a sprite and insert or just double click it put one wherever 
and I'm going to resize it to 32 by 32 and zoom in with the control scroll and we're going to make an enemy here um, I don't know we'll just have like a snail I guess um, we can make some more creative enemies later uh, okay and we'll just give him a little color we're not going to overdo this too much just give him a little shading so he's not quite as ugly okay so that's fine for now we'll just give the inside a little color blue sure okay so here's our enemy and uh, since he is an enemy we need to think about his collision box which is separate from his actual pixels so we can bring this down make it be around here doesn't have to be exactly perfect but just close so this is what will interact and what will um, have take collisions so we can close this uh, actually maybe I'll make him uh, different colors will stand out a little more. Mm, let's make him red so you can know he's an enemy. Okay, so now he also needs a platform behavior. Make sure he's selected and go down here to platform. And now we can we can take off his default controls or else we'd be controlling him also. And now we can go to event sheet and we need to he'll he'll have gravity and everything but he's just gonna sit there so now we need to make him uh, move attack whatever you want to call it so we'll add an event and we'll say um, there's a lot of different ways you can do programming and, and construct and anything else so we'll just do a few different things for each time we're gonna program something so just to show you how event sheets work we'll add an event and we'll use a system event and every tick which means just always once every tick it runs this action we will add an action for our sprite which we'll rename enemy in a second and we will Mm, we could do platform stuff or we could make him bullet physics or whatever but for right now we'll just try this move forward and he will move forward one so every tick our enemy moves forward and we'll go ahead and rename him enemy uh, enemy okay so save that we'll test it okay he's going backwards because we put forward so negative one now he should come at us yep pretty scary okay now we've got an enemy and uh... next we'll look at like putting him making him turn around at edges or maybe we'll wait on that for a while it just depends and um, we'll do some like health and animation all that stuff is coming up in the next few tutorials uh, we need to fix his bounding box a little bit like we did with the snail and then I might do some graphics tutorials or just whatever anyone wants to see next and if nobody comments and I'm ready to do another one then I'll just do any of those things so I'm not sure how long this has went on but I better go ahead and end it now so thanks for watching. Be sure to comment. Tell me what you want to see next. If you have any ideas or whatever.